Well, hello, Peace Church. It's good to be back with you again as we worship and celebrate during this Advent season. As you can tell, we are in our theme called Rediscover Christmas Good News in Troubling Times. And each week, we're celebrating uh, the different aspects of Advent. We've had hope and peace. And now today, we're going to be talking about finding our joy, uh, even in our discouragement. So that's going to be the focus of our day together around joy and celebration. Before we begin our worship, though, we do want to celebrate Uh, some of the announcements that are before us. Uh, First of all, we wanted to do something uh, different to help bring our community together. So immediately following the worship service, uh, beginning around 10 o'clock, we will be offering up the opportunity to join a Zoom fellowship time like we normally do when we are together. Uh, We're planning on doing that. Uh, We'll send out the link to you over the email. Uh, Just uh, click on the link and join that Zoom conversation. There's no agenda, simply to be together and to celebrate that God is calling us together to be a community. So so join us for that. If you have any questions, of course, call the office. Also, we're looking for folks to video themselves doing scripture readings for us. If you'd like to do that, please let us know, and we'll send you the appropriate scriptures for the day, but we'd invite you to record those and then send them in, and then we'll include them into the service uh, each week. Today, we're very thankful to have Lynn Alcock share the scripture for us uh, as part of that journey as well. So Debbie, tell us about our faith formation reminders coming up and what's happening. Certainly. So today is the last day to take advantage of our Nativity um, Story drive through out at the Winters Farm. That will be held from 3 to 6 p.m. tonight. Um, Please make sure you look at your e-communications and your December Olive Branch for specific details on how you can get out there and just keep following the signs with the star on it. And then as a reminder, we will be handing out our January Uh, mission boxes to our faith formation kiddos so um, please make sure you get out there and get those and take advantage of the beautiful story we're we're really excited we had a good turnout yesterday so um, we'll hopefully see you tonight very good. Thank you, Debbie. And a big shout out to, to Debbie for really coordinating this event, but also for uh, the Winters for opening their farm up and everybody else who's helped putting it together and our actors. Uh, we just give thanks for how we can do that. Now, since we aren't able to really be together, our, we normally have our Christmas giving tree. And over the last couple of weeks, we've heard from uh, Family Promise as well as Project Legacy. And today we're going to continue in our, giving, our virtual giving tree as we learn about more about the women's shelter. So we invite you to watch Watch this video and to engage uh, in that process. Hello, my name is Jeannie Thompson. I'm Director of Youth Programming and Community Education for the Women's Shelter and Support Center here in Rochester, Minnesota. At the Women's Shelter, we provide temporary emergency shelter for victims of domestic violence. Um, We serve Uh, men, women, and children in our programs. We also offer transitional housing programs, and we have support groups available and a 24-hour crisis line so that people can reach us whenever they need us. Our mission is saving lives, restoring hope, and changing futures. Thank you so much for coming today. We give thanks uh, for all of the agencies that we support. Uh, if you need more information about that, please go to our website or call the office and we can redirect you on how you can uh, support these various organizations that we love so dearly in our midst. We do want to keep in our prayers today all those who are just struggling this day with, with COVID. Uh, we do want to be mindful also of our, our frontline health care providers uh, and give thanks for each and every one of them who continues to care for us in this community and around the world. Uh, today we want to lift up Randy Stevens' father, uh, or Rob Stevens' father, Randy, excuse me, uh, who's been hospitalized with COVID. Just prayers for the Stevens family. And then a celebration is going to take place here on Sunday afternoon uh, where Rocky, uh, you've seen her play piano with us a few times, and her fiance Christian will be married. Uh, as we're very thankful and excited for them both as we gather together. So let's be in one spirit. Uh, we're going to invite uh, our music musicians from afar. They uh, are providing virtual music for us, so we'd like to invite uh, Jenny to begin our time together this day.
we give thanks each and every day for our musicians in our midst. And uh, as, we, as you know, we've really taken some stronger efforts to keep everyone safe. And so we are minimized here. We're going to be bringing all of our music in virtually over the next uh, several weeks. And so here with us is uh, Debbie and myself and Steve uh, back on sound. So we give thanks uh, for, for their service with us as well. I do want to share with you as we gather together on this day these wonderful words from Isaiah. And as we hear these words, Isaiah really speaks true to where we are in our lives and in our world. The people of Israel were in exile. And as we come into this section of Isaiah, they are returning back to what's called the post-exile period. And it's the good news that comes about delivering God's people back together again. And that is our hope and promise that God gives for us in our world today as well. So from Isaiah 61, hear these words. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined nations and the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples All who see them acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. That's the promise before us this day as we gather on this third Sunday of Advent and as we gather together on this day of remembering and and celebrating that we can find joy Even in our discouragements, we know that God is with us. So let's enter now into a time that we will light our third Advent candle, the candle of joy. My friends, soon we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ. So today we worship God with joy in our hearts as we're reminded always of the words of the angel that said on that first Christmas day, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. We give thanks for the joy before us as we hear now God's word that that is spoken for us and to us. Today's scripture reading, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24, the message. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God, no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you, who belong to Christ Jesus, to live. Don't suppress the spirit and don't stifle those who have a word from the master. On the other hand, don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out anything tainted with evil. May God, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of Jesus the Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If God said it, God will do it. This ends the reading. We thank Lynn for sharing the scripture with us today. And so as we gather on this third Sunday of Advent, as we come together near and far, 
We light this third candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. And with the coming of the light, there is great joy. Joy that is ours not only at Christmas, but as we anticipate Christmas. There is joy and light and promise ahead of us, for it is indeed a time of rejoicing. So we light on this day as we remember always our Advent candles. First we light and are reminded of the candle of hope because we know that there is hope for the world. And we relight the second candle to remind us of Christ's peace for our world around us. And we relight or light today the third candle, this great candle of joy, the promise that no matter where we are in life, no matter what pains or struggles or discouragement, that the great joy of God is always with us. Will you join me in prayer? O Holy One, as Christmas does draw near, help us to rediscover the joy of Christmas. We can feel a joy in our lives and see it in those all around us. Still, for some of us, this is a hard time, a sad time, because of unhappy things that have happened in our lives or struggles that we face. So help us to find that joy, to have that joy that does not depend on earthly happiness, but on you. Help us to be filled with your joy so that we may share it in this world each and every day. Help us to be a blessing as we gather together. We pray all this in Jesus' name. As we gather, we celebrate God's spirit of love and the prayer that Jesus has first taught us. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's hear the song that for our Advent candle lighting as we hear this beautiful song, One Candle is Lit this day. We do feel the joy of God's presence in and amongst us, and I could think of no better hymn to sing today on this Joy Sunday than Joy to the World. So let's celebrate through music this beautiful, powerful hymn that speaks to us today, Joy to the World.
We do celebrate uh, the joy to the world that is all around us, and I wanted to just take a moment to give thanks again for Donna Scott Bradley for the decorations, but they've also uh, donated and uh, dedicating today this new Advent candle holder uh, that is before us. It's such a beautiful, beautiful gift for us to celebrate this Advent season, so we give thanks this day for Don and Scott. We now want to just uh, transition and talk a little bit about for our faith formation for our kids and our ongoing uh, saga with Brick Brain and what it means to be part of our faith journey uh, and our superheroes. And we're going to hear our message today from Ben Bedard. Good morning, friends. So good to see you again. I hope you're all doing well. So do you remember the hero we're talking about this week? We're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Last week, Winston told you the story about the angel that came and visited Mary. The angel told Mary that she was going to be a mother. Now Mary was scared, but she trusted God. This is one way we show our love to God, by trusting God. This week, I wanna talk about another way that we love God. And that's through praise. Do you know what the word praise means? Praise is when we tell somebody that they've done something well. My guess is that your parents praise you when you clean your room or help a brother or sister. Praise is when you thank somebody for something and tell them that they've done a good job. Praise is an important part of Mary's story. After the angel leaves, she praises God. Her song is still used as a prayer today. In it, she thanks God for all of the good things that God has done for Mary and her people. She thanks God for all of God's work in the world. So how do we pr praise God? Well, there are lots of ways. Sometimes it's as simple as saying, God, you're cool but you can add on to that if you want. You can give all the reasons that you wanna praise God. Maybe you talk about the things that make you happy. I know my son Bennett makes me very happy. He's very important to me. That would be a good way to praise God. Or maybe you talk about all of the things in the world that you think are awesome. I know Bennett and I were amazed by the blue moon on Halloween night. Did you see it? Or maybe just the stars in the sky at night? Aren't they awesome? You can tell God, thank you for making those. And that's another way you can praise God. Simply thanking God for all the things that are important to you. And then when you've thought of all of the things that you're thankful for or that you think are awesome in the world, you just tell those things to God. So given my examples, it might go something like this. God, you're cool. God, you have given me a son, Bennett. He is so smart and kind and beautiful. He is precious. God, you have made the moon and the stars, and those are amazing. And you have made the forest and the rivers, the skies and the seas. The earth is beautiful. Thank you, God. You have made a special world with many special people. You are awesome. It's that easy. That's all you have to do to praise God. And when you praise God, you show your love to God. Thanks, friends. I hope all is well, and I can't wait to see you again. Bye. Well, we thank uh, Ben for that message for us in our ongoing faith uh, formation journey. We're going to be blessed today with some incredible music by Kyle and Dylan and Jenny Carroll for Advent. Amen. 
the winter's cold embrace, clothed in a shroud of white, an anxious world in silence waits through the dark of night, as the sky above. We can feel the moment is near. Soon the child of peace will child is this the world awaits with quiet expectation when will he come the promised one to bring us peace and salvation We give thanks always for that beautiful uh, music that is with us in so many powerful ways. I just love the rich diversity that we have here in all of our music and all of our silences. So thank you to our musicians who share every week with us. I want to share with you from the Gospel of John today, our our gospel reading. There will be some uh, similarity to last week's reading from Mark, and so you're going to hear uh, the same story told a little bit differently with a different purpose for us today. So from, Mark, or from John chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, and then 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself is not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is a testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him then, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? 
And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered him, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me, for I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. And this took place in Bethany, across from Jordan, where John was baptizing. So this is a very active time, and uh, it really does set the stage for why we gather together during this Advent season. And many people have already started to shift into the Christmas mode, and I'm really starting to think it's feeling a lot like Christmas. Actually, I have to confess that I turned on the Hallmark Channel the other day and actually watched one of those sappy Christmas movies because I felt I just needed to get that Christmas spirit. But all around, we're beginning to see it taking place. We see it here in the sanctuary and on our city streets, and we're just finding this new spirit coming away. And I find myself getting all filled with that Christmas spirit. I'm starting to get it. And I just, well, feel like singing all the time, if you will. Do you? Well, hey, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Well, you know how it goes. I hope you just uh, feel that Christmas spirit and you can just join in with us. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. It's a good, merry, feel good, happy time of year. But what if you don't feel that way? What if you don't feel happy or merry or you just can't get into that Christmas spirit? What if life is so overwhelming, so powerful, it sucks all of the merry and all the happiness of feelings away? I know that happens. When we think about the joy of our children, and then we continue to see the horrifying, heartbreaking, startling news of four or 545 children undocumented children who are still separated and being separated from their parents. The television shows us images of our wonderful military families preparing for the holidays, but worrying about their their young men and women serving around the world who will not be coming home. Or families who have lost everything to the devastation of fires all across this country. Or families in the Midwest still trying to rebuild from this past fall's severe storms or those dealing with the struggle and the pain and the uncertainty of COVID and the pandemic ahead or those who mourn this day, mourning the lives of the loss of their loved ones or those who are experiencing broken relationships or disease that friends face with cancer every day or depression that is beginning to overwhelm so many. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Well, for many, they find themselves there and other people find themselves in complete joy. But together, I think it's time for us to to reconsider and rediscover what Christmas is all about. For us to find joy, even in the midst of discouragement, we know that God's joy can be among us. So those words that I read earlier describe the human feelings that are so dependent on the circumstances of our lives. These are stories of faithful people from our past generations. And many people today describe our human feelings in the way of whether you feel happy or you don't. Either you're merry or you don't. And as our feelings go, so goes our ability to experience and rediscover Christmas. The Christian life, however, is not built upon the ever-changing, of our, uh, our ever-changing feelings that we experience. You know, Jesus really 
never told us to be happy, and Jesus for sure never told us to be merry, and considering that the world in which we li- that he lived was very harsh and a very oppressive world, and that the people among whom he lived were very poor, the poor of the poor, the despised, the marginalized, and those even unfairly treated. Think about, think about those who came there at his birth. Those shepherds, those outcasts who came to be with him. So it would have just been plain wrong to come with a gospel message that essentially said, hey, don't worry, be happy, it's going to be good. Because that's not the reality of the world in which we live. Because the Christian life never puts a happy face on human difficulty. But rather, God is with us in the midst of the reality of life, the reality of human struggles and pains and sufferings. God is there in the midst of all that. So Jesus never told the hurting people to be happy and get over it. But he lived with them. He came to them. He ministered to them. And he brought healing to them. And instead of telling them to be happy, he told them to rejoice, to give thanks, to celebrate what God is doing in their midst. So when the prophet Isaiah that I read at the beginning of the service proclaims God's presence to the people who have been scattered into exile, he said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. He's rejoicing that restoration is taking place. Great joy is in front of everyone. And then Paul in in 1 Thessalonians talks about that we should rejoice always. That command to rejoice is heard at least 68 times, if not more, in the New Testament. And how is the call to to rejoice different than being happy or being merry? Well, happy and merry are actually, those two are actually adjectives, and they describe feelings. Either you have them or you don't have them. But to rejoice is a verb. It's an action that we take in the face of life as it really is, however it is. And no matter what it is, we are called to rejoice always. So this word, rejoice, it's a powerful, wonderful word. And the Greek word for rejoice is actually keros. And keros is the root word for the word charis, which means grace. And grace is the unconditional, undeserved, unearned, unmerited gift of God's love. Someone has said that grace is God's loving us just for the heck of it. It's just because, just because God wants to do it. We can't ever earn grace. We don't really even deserve it. But that's what God gives to us. And grace is God's gift to freely give as God chooses. So if we really understand that rejoicing has something to do with action and God's grace, perhaps we can define it this way. To rejoice is to find the grace God has placed in our lives. I guess you could say it like this. To rejoice is simply to find the joy. To rediscover Christmas and find the joy even in our discouragement. So God has literally permeated our world with this joy. God's gracious joy is everywhere to be found, and it's time for us to rediscover that joy. I know I get pulled down by all that's going around in the world. I get pulled down by by, by the news I hear every day about COVID. But I'm here to tell you, COVID doesn't have the final word, but God does. And God's joy can come into our life. God has everyone's attention. We heard that in our scripture reading for today, to make the road straight for us. We are to do the work to bring God into our life. No matter what comes our way, we know that God is there. So how do we find, in the midst of all that's going on, in the midst of these struggles and trials and the turmoil that we face in our world today, how do we, how do we experience that joy in our life? Well, I thought about that a little bit. 
And I really believe that, that we've lost a sense of humor in the world today. We're so consumed by the, the darkness, if you will, that's going around that, that sometimes I think we just lost that, that ability just to sit back and to laugh and to smile. Did you know that? That our sense of humor is a gift from God. It's part of our, 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 our body's defense mechanism and our healing system. And our researchers tell us that laughter releases serotonin, which is the body's joy hormone. So laughter, it's an awesome thing. Laughter can help you sleep better at night. Laughter can reduce incidences of stress-related illness, including high blood pressure. Laughter can lessen pain and speed up even the healing in our body. So take time to laugh a little bit. Because your ability to find humor in the midst of the reality in which we live is a skill set that God wants us to have. Now, I've shared this story before, and actually, I, I heard that this has happened to other pastors as well, but in my first church that I served, I was out on a, a, a winter day, and I was at a graveside ceremony as we were uh, celebrating the life of one of our, our dear friends from that congregation, and we were standing by the graveside, and we were getting ready to do the committal service, and as I began to say, ashes to ashes, dust to thunk, down I went into the, the, the hole where the casket was going to go. And I found myself there, and I came up out of there. There was some help from the, the funeral directors, but I found myself up, and I just said, He is risen. Now, that's happened here, too, on Easter Sunday when I fell back from the choir loft coming forward, and I tripped, and I came, fell down, and came up, and again proclaimed that He is risen. Even in the midst of those pains and struggles, we have to find some time just to laugh and to rejoice and know that God is with us. The ironic thing with, with the family that, uh, of the funeral that I did, and I found myself there at the graveyard years later and still today on Facebook when I talk to that family, he says to me, Pastor Paul, you know, that was the best funeral that we've ever been to. The family still talks about it when we get together, and mom would have laughed at laughed with us at that time. And I know here from our Easter service as well, people don't remember my sermons over all the years, but that's one thing that they keep reminding me about all the time. Joy. Joy in the midst of community and joy even in the face of death. Joy can be everywhere and that little humorous moment can become a part of the healing even of those who are grieving. So take time, my friends. Lighten up and laugh a little bit. How is your sense of humor? Have you considered that humor is a very important component of the life that we lead as Christians? And the other thing I would just lift up is music. And joy can be found in music. And even around here at the church, we're beginning to pound out all those beautiful Christmas songs and I love, because I spent so much time in my, in my truck as I drive around town, I love Sirius Radio. It's now plugged in to the Christmas channel. And quite often when I feel overwhelmed by the enormous amount of, of illness and tragedy, tragedy that we're experiencing in our world, it weighs heavy on me when I ride around. But all I have to do is to turn on the Christmas channel, and it seems like all of the world becomes well. And while I miss this day, the gift of music that we can do around our community to go to our homebound folks and to our nursing home and care facilities to do Christmas caroling. And I miss with Tom and me bringing out our guitars and our group of people gathered together to sing the love of carols. I know the gift of music still goes forth in amazing ways. Joy of music. Take it in and let God speak to you in that moment. Because what are those songs that speak to you this day? Even though we're not going to be singing them together until Christmas Eve at 5.30, we have to find ways for those tunes and hymns and the classical works work joy into your heart. So take time. Just take time and listen and to tune in how God is speaking. Those are two very simple things that we can do. Two simple things that can get us into the Christmas spirit about what God is calling us to do and to be. And so when you're riding around town and you plug in the Christmas music, 
And if you come by me, you're going to hear me belting out, Oh, holy night, as loud as I can, because nobody can hear me there. And I invite you to do the same thing, because joy comes in the gift of music. And joy is everywhere, because God has graciously permeated our world with joy. Rejoice, the act of finding the joy in life. It's a Christian discipline that should rank right up there with prayer. So rejoice, my friends, and rediscover Christmas once again and find God's love there in the midst of it all. So celebrate this day. Find the joy, find the peace, find the hope, and then you'll find the love. Amen. Let's join together with another one of those beautiful hymns, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. Rejoice always, God calls us to do it to be, but it's important for us to take time and for us to welcome that God's spirit into our midst. So we're going to hear a beautiful version of Emmanuel just to draw us into this time of prayer and ask God to be with us. Emmanuel, God with us. join me in prayer. God, we do thank you for this day that we come together just to find those moments to rejoice and to give thanks. Help us, God, inspire us to find laughter even in the midst of all the struggles. Help us to find the gift of music so we can sing boldly all the the joy and praise that you give to us. And most importantly, just help us to be your people as we walk through this world shedding a little light upon it. Help us to be your people. And as we gather, we lift up all those prayers in our community, as we lift up those who are struggling and those who rejoice both. We pray for Randy Stevens, Rob's father, as he has experienced illness and now is in the hospital with COVID. We pray for the new life and the new marriage of Rocky and Christian as they begin their new life together. And we pray for all those this day who just find the glimpses of of your grace in their midst, the charis that comes before us all. Help us to be in that presence of your grace-filled moments. And as we do, help us to always be mindful of those in our community, those who are in our care facilities or who are homebound. And so this day we lift up Evelyn Stiller and Doris Underdahl. We lift up Joanne Amundsen and Lou Vangelis 
and our sister Audrey Johnson, Ruth Martin, R- Russ and Dolores Kelsch. We lift up Ed Rust and Dean Bauck. We lift up Linda Frost, Miria Hawley and Bev Morton and Margie Burrows. And then for Betty Allen and Helen Corfitz, Sue Dale and Cal Hawley, Ed and Mabel Wagner and Barbara Ladson, special blessings on them during this time as well. Help us all to experience your joyful presence as we encounter your spirit each and every day. Help us to be your people. Guide us and direct us and let us find that joy in our hearts even when we feel discouraged. Help us rediscover the new life that is before us in amazing ways as we give thanks for your presence. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as we gather, we do know that God is indeed in the midst of all. God be with us. called to rejoice always. No matter what life brings our way, we know that God's Spirit is with us. So let us rejoice and give thanks. For as we gather together as your people, we know that you are with us. For this is our church. We make it what it is. is. Others will feel welcomed. It will do a great work if if I work. work. It will make generous gifts to many causes. If I am a generous giver of my time, talents, and treasure, it will be a sanctuary for social justice and for peace. If I advocate for marginalized communities and practice peace in every setting of my life, it will be a church that embraces all, that builds community and transforms lives. If I, who make it what it is, practice these things, Therefore, with the grace of God, we shall be a safe and inclusive and joy-filled church living God's radical message. And I shall dedicate myself to being all the things my my church to be. Amen. As we engage in God's spirit and we wonder where God's presence calls us to be, we just celebrate God's presence through the gift of the child. What child is this? (laughs) 